Hey, what's going on, No Nation? CJ Wilson here with Dope Talk. Let you guys filter in a little bit. Signing day, National Signing Day 2023. Uh, we expected some fireworks going into signing day. I guess we got some depending on uh, what side of the stick you was looking at. Oh, boy, get started. All right, guys, well, welcome to Dope Talk. It's CJ Wilson here. Um, this is your host. Dope Talk is brought to you by DashFi, the modern charge car for digital ad spend. DashFi is a business to business corporate expense car program that gets you the highest cash back on the market starting at 3%. Most programs start right at 1.5, go double it up with DashFi at 3%. Again, if you're not getting cash back on your business to business expenses, expenses, what exactly are you doing? Um, it could be from anything from shipping um, shipping a package to a, to a potential customer, whatever it may be. Dash Fire got you covered. All right, guys, let's talk about some National Sign of Day real quick. Um, just pretty much how the show format is going to go for today. I want to talk about today specifically first. Uh, some wills on the trail, decommitments, whatever it may be, some commitments as well. Talk about that real quick, and then we'll jump into a little brief little... I think it's a, 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 a still a good recruiting class. Nonetheless, what happened? Uh, we're going to jump into everything in regards to the commits for this class, and just give some thoughts on each commit once we, um, you know, talk about the day specifically. And then we're going to open up at the end of the show. Uh, I want to hear from you guys. You know, it's been a while since we talked. We haven't talked since uh, the ACC championship. So I'm going to get some takes from you guys in regards to how you feel like the uh, recruiting class shaped up how we finished and things like that. I'm pretty sure you guys got some interesting stuff to say nonetheless. So I'm definitely ready to hear from you guys. All right, I guess we'll go ahead and address the big elephant in the room, man. As you guys know, this is my favorite commit, and he was a highest rated commit on the recruiting class. K.J. Bolden, um, five-star safety, ended up flipping his commitment um, on signing day to the Georgia Bulldogs. Uh, big time, big time, big time with for the FSU Seminoles. Kid did state he um, – he felt he knew his decision three week three weeks ago, which is kind of crazy. If you guys kind of look back to the timeline of what happened three weeks ago with uh, the playoff snub and things like that, pretty much being in some bad news since then. I guess you can kind of read the tea leaves with there with um, you know people beating down and negative recruiting and rightfully so. As if I was an SEC coach or any coach in nature, I probably use the same tactic. You know, as far as FSU commits and in, in the playoff snub, so to speak. But as an FSU coach, it should be an easy counter. With us going to 12 games uh, next year, but you know you got national media pumping the SEC and all of that, so you understand the lure, so to speak, for for uh, these conferences. Um, but no, we got to do better down the stretch, man. Just simple as that. KJ was a dynamic playmaker, a real dynamic playmaker. We got to do better down the stretch. This is three straight years um, where FSU has lost um, lost out on some of their top ranked recruits. You go back to 2000 and what 21. Of course, we had Travis Hunter flip on signing day 2022. We did end up holding on to Hakeem Williams, um, although, you know, with late p- pushes from the Miami Hurricanes and Texas A&M, we ended up holding on to Hakeem Williams, but you end up losing Kevin Falk. You're a uh, four-star with in this, uh, position of position of need that you've been struggling. Top 100 defensive end Kevin Falk end up flipping on national signing day to the Auburn Tigers. And, of course, today you have uh, K.J. Bowden flipping to the Georgia Bulldogs and the Mono Blunt, what a crazy recruitment that was. Uh, that is, um, expect him to be within the Miami Hurricanes class. We'll get to him in a second. But speaking about uh, KJ uh, specifically, yeah, was, we, we, we have to have better self-awareness as, as a staff. And also when it comes to these big-time recruits, I tweeted this on the timeline as well. Um, building relationships is cool. You know, recruiting these guys throughout the year and all that type of stuff, all of that is cool. But real recruiting with, 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 need, with, with these type of players – the real recruiting come down pretty much to the last week of the recruitment. That's when, you know, the big dogs really bark, so to speak. And that's when you got to close this stuff out. And you know, the last three years when we came down to the stretch for these type of recruitments, we, we've lost one at the very least along the way. So that has to, that has to be better. Has to be better. Um, and just speaking of DBs in general, KJ Bolden hurt us in the fit in the fit of in, in the reason that how can I put this? He hurt us. Of course, he's a talented player, and him not being within this class definitely hurts FSU. But it also hurts FSU and hurt it hurt FSU and other potential guys because I know for a fact it was I'm gonna say for a fact I have good reason to believe it was a couple of the DBs that could have been was begging to be into FSU class 
were asking to be within this FSU class, but got turned around due to tight spots. And we know Pat Sertan has been doing a hell of a job since doing this one year. FSU has an amazing defensive back recruiting class within, you know, this 2024 cycle. And you had K.J. Bolden in the fold at that time, Jamari Howard, Kai Bates, um, some of those guys that committed late. DB spots was really tight. I do – I have good reason to believe that uh, the kid that decommitted from the Florida Gators, Wardell Mack, I, 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 I have reason to believe that Wardell Mack – would have been and wanted to be within this FSU recruiting class, but spots just wasn't available. Ended up signing with uh, the Texas Longhorns. So a couple of the kids, it was a St. Thomas, not St. Thomas Aquinas, American Heritage Safety, ended up committing to Wisconsin. It was a guy that, that was um, possible as well as far as DBs down the stretch. So I know for just from intel and things like that, there was other defensive backs that FSU just had to turn around and, and, and quality defensive backs too. The FSU had to turn around just for – the simple spot, simple fact that spots wasn't available. So losing KJ down the stretch like that definitely does hurt because you had the opportunity to sign other defensive backs that could have been really quality replacements. Not to the level of KJ because I do think he is the best safety in the country by far. The kid is a dynamic athlete, does everything on the field. Think he'd be a, a first round corner too, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, losing him down the stretch like that to the Georgia Bulldogs definitely hurts. Uh, you got Armando Blunt, the five star defensive in from the. From Miami Central, from my loud so we're going to down, you guys. My apologies. Yeah, Mondo Blunt, five star defensive end, is crazy recruitment, right? And I'm gonna speak to my guy Larry on in a few in a few about uh, you know battles with the Miami Hurricanes, but crazy recruitment. You guys remember he ended up he was favoring FSU for a while, ended up committed to the Miami Hurricanes. Uh, a couple weeks later, ended up decommitting from the Miami Hurricanes. Reclassifying to the 2023 to the 2024 recruiting class. If you guys remember, he's a 2025 kid. Ended up flipping his commitment to the to FSU Seminoles. Um, long story short, of course, he ended up flipping during National Signing Day. The buzz and speculation started happening early weeks of December. He did ended up electing not to take an official visit to FSU this past weekend and decided to take one to the Miami Hurricanes. My issue with this recruitment is just read the room a little bit better. Like, you got to read the room a little bit. I feel like, to be honest with you, I feel like we got played. I feel like um, the coaching staff got played, so to speak, a little bit um, in regards to just reading the tea leaves and, and seeing what's what with the with the vibes of that recruitment and things like that. The moment he stepped, he, he um, stepped campus on, on uh, the Miami Hurricanes campus instead of taking an official visit to FSU, I feel like the staff should have parted ways. Um, definitely should have made an announcement that we're going to be a mutual, mutually parting ways just for the simple fact of just for the bad PR. I'm going to drag the commitment out until, you know, three or four days in the National Sunday when it's, the writing's been on the wall. And, you know, of course, it's going to be set up like a, which it is a big time kit, but like a National Sunday Day type of flip when that kind of been in the works. You could have got ahead of that a little bit um, just from a perception standpoint and just, you know, ended that relationship once, especially, uh, you know, Hell, this 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 could be a rule that Mike Norvell implement. I think a lot of coaches around the country should implement this. Like, if you're a commit, if you're a commit and you haven't taken an official visit to that school and your plans is to take an official visit for that last recruiting weekend prior to signing day and you decide to take an official visit elsewhere, uh, if I, if for me personally, I, I would probably end that relationship with the kid because of the writing's on the wall. If you look at this weekend, uh, Blunt, FSU commit, Miami end up going to Miami. I think uh, the Raleigh kid that was committed to the Miami Hurricanes ended up visiting Alabama this weekend. Uh, flipped to Alabama. Um, the linebacker, uh, the linebacker that Hayes, Hayes, the Hayes kid that that, that, that Miami ended up flipping. Took an, uh, committed to Florida Gators. Took an official visit to the Hurricanes this weekend. Ended up flipping. So you you kind of see the trends in regards to these kids. So me personally, I, I, that'll be a a coaching rule of mine, like if you if you haven't taken an official visit to the team you're committed to as as the coach, and you're officially visiting other schools the day you know the week before signing day. I mean, just read read the writing on the wall. I would definitely cut ties with the relationship, um, in my opinion. But yeah, Blunt feels I feel like, I feel like Blunt's a big loss, especially if you look at the defensive line recruiting. Um, we only got two. Well, now currently three. We did get a, a late commit for the Nas White. I'm going to mention him in a second. But we have three defensive linemen commit within this 2024 class. Can't happen. We have to do better in the trenches. Have to. So blunt flipping is definitely uh, a big loss for FSU. And then you have the Jeremiah Smith battle. You're pretty much 
one of the two teams mentioned all the way up to the final hour of this recruitment. Then it turned to a two-team match with the Miami Hurricanes and Ohio State Buckeyes. Simply put, big ball, big ball was played. Down the stretch, big big dog stuff was played in regards to um, you know money involved and things like that. If you're going to, if you feel like you're going to compete for these type of recruits, these five star recruits, if you want to be in these type of battles, you got to be prepared to go down the stretch and and play play big big you know big dog play when it comes to the money and things like that. If you can't do it, if we're not equipped for that, essentially down the stretch, then don't even go after after these type of kids. Don't waste your resources and time on the relationships. Because at the end of the day, yeah, you have these relationships with all these coaches. Now it's time to talk business. And big business is talked about, you know, down the stretch within these recruitments. And I feel like, you know, with JJ, Jeremiah Smith, we when it came down to the business, we just we just couldn't play that type of ball with the business with the business. And the Miami Hurricanes, they they definitely could have played that type of ball and they gave the Ohio State Buckeyes a run. So again, this is business when it's business at the end of the day when it comes down to these type of recruitments. And of course, LJ McCray uh, ended up sticking with the uh, Florida Gators commitment. A guy that you, you was pretty much the first P5 team, the first P5 team to show LJ interest. You recruited him for three to four years, had the longest standing relationship. And, and then, you know, the Florida Gators, you got stagnant over the, the spring and the summer. Florida was very active in that recruitment, got him on campus multiple times in the summer, ended up committed to Florida. He did waver a little bit down the stretch, you know, due to, hell, I would have too, man, looking at that time. I wouldn't want to play for no damn Bill and Napier, to be quite honest with you, man. We see the writing on the wall. He's probably going to end up being can next year. So I understand why he did waver. You see why a bunch of kids flipped. But he did end up sticking with that commitment. That's another one. I mean, that's so pretty much you're 0 for 4 in big dog battles with for these five-star kids. 0 for 4. When you had good chances, you had two of them committed. And you had two that you had. Well, LJ, you was the leader for at one point in time. Jeremiah, you just, when it came down to the stretch, you just didn't play big time ball. So simple as that. So that's 0 for 4 on those type of those type of athletes, the, the big dog five star battles. Again, if you want to recruit these kids, understand. Understand if you want to recruit these type of kids, you got to go down to the stretch. You got to be willing to uh, open up the bank. Hell, you got to you got to be willing to talk business because if you're going to put all these resources at the end of the day, business is done at the end of the day when it comes to these type of recruits. Uh, make sure you guys like this video and subscribe to the channel. If you got any super chat questions or anything like that, go ahead and let me know. Uh, specifically, and we can I can have that question addressed. Uh, Denaz White ended up getting a commitment for Denaz White. I like this kid, 6'4", 323 pounds out of the North Carolina area, Charlotte Concord area. Uh, physical kid, athletic too, moves pretty well for his size. Ron a guy, big body. He has an SEC type of body, something that we've been you know needing with, along the defensive line. Ended up beating out uh, the Miami Hurricanes and Tennessee Volunteers for a service. I like this kid a lot. Three-star kid, of course. Um, but again, I, just from a film standpoint, I think he's pretty good. A pretty good gift for National Signing Day towards the end. I think if we would have, you know, held on to KJ and had some more flowers, it would have been a lot more glamorous. But overall, the FSU class is still pretty damn good. My only concern specifically for the FSU class is just trenches. We only got two defensive linemen committed. Um, can't happen. That has to be a lot better. A lot better. That's my only issue within this class. The class currently sits at number nine right now within the top ten. Top ten finishes. It's not a bad class. We just wanted that splash, that splash five star getting to hold on to a couple of guys. It had potential to be a great class, but it's an okay class nonetheless within the top ten. I'm going to go ahead and talk about some of these commits just to give you guys some information on them. Then we'll move forward a little bit. First up within the 2024 recruiting class, let's give you guys some information if you guys aren't too familiar with this class and the guys we're bringing in. We got Kai Bates, four-star cornerback out of the Orlando area, 6'2", 180 pounds. I like this kid a lot. Very high on this kid. It's only um, second year playing football, um, played basketball, was a receiver, well, playing quarterback, excuse me, played basketball and was a receiver prior. Real nice, big-time athlete. Like it, like, like him a lot. Uh, one of my favorite cornerbacks within the Flo the Florida area. And that's another thing, too. I want to give a, a real shout-out and hats off to Patrick Sertan. He got the top three uh, cornerbacks within the state of Florida committed. Charles Lester, um, Jamari Howard, and, and, of course, Kai Bates. Hats off to him. Did an amazing job recruiting the defensive back position. We did lose KJ. I feel like KJ would have – keeping KJ would have been the best defensive back class in the country by far, but it's still a very good – db class and when you lock down the top three cornerbacks in the state of florida that's a 
That's a pretty big statement. He was originally committed to LSU over the summer, took an official visit to FSU. You got um, Tennessee, Alabama, and LSU were some of the teams we competed with down the stretch. I like this kid a lot in Kai Bates. I think you guys are going to be pretty excited. Once he gets coached up by Pat Sertan, the sky's the limit. Now, I'm going to move on to Jonathan Daniels, 6'4", 180-pound offensive lineman from the Pensacola area. Um, I think Jonathan's going to be a little bit of a project. He needs to uh, get in, get in the weight room, get a little bit bigger. But you can see he's a physical kid. He has a long wingspan. That's why people are projecting him as a tackle. Seven foot, seven foot plus wingspan. Um, athletic kid as well. I think he just needs to get a little bit bigger, get within the Coach Storm's uh, program, probably take a red shirt this year. And then once we get going and he gets built up by Coach Storm's, and Alex Atkins gets his hands on him and mold the clay a little bit. I think we could be um, he could be a pretty interesting player. 6'4, but again, we have seven foot wingspan. You can play the offensive tackle position. All right, moving on to the running backs. Uh, Makai Dansley, Florida High, Tallahassee, Florida. By the time you know we kept some of the local talent in in in, in home again. And I like uh Makai a lot. Dynamic playmaker. One of the fastest players in the country. When I say one of the fastest players, I mean one of the fastest players in the country. Elite. Elite track speed. Uh, I think he was second in nationals in the 400 meters, uh, 400 meter dash this year. Elite in the 200 as well. State champion in both events. Um, as you guys see in the film, once he hits the open field, it's a wrap. Long strider. I think he could be an interesting compliment to Cam Davis, who I'm going to talk about next. But again, Makai Dansley, big time playmaker. Use him um, in the pass game as receiver. Kind of, he reminds me of Lawrence Toy Filler, to be completely honest with you. Um, I think he'd be a, a more explosive Lawrence Torre Philly due to his speed, but you can see the versatility and the things he could do. I'm really excited about Makai. Moving on to the um, probably the longest standing commit for the 2024 recruiting class, Cam Davis, the big time running back out of the Albany area, 5'10, 220 pounds. I like Cam a lot, a lot, a lot. He reminds me of Cam Akers from a stature and how he runs, and also it's crazy. Both Cam, his name is Cam, too. Both Cam's. Play quarterback uh, at, at, for the high school team as well. Uh, physical kid, real physical kid. Uh, being committed to FSU for, for the longest, but if you guys remember the Georgia Bulldogs, Alabama Crimson Tide, and the Florida Gators all try to throw their hat um, at the table for Cam Davis in regards to recruiting him. One of the better running back players in the country, the running back prospects in the country. I think Cam is going to be a star for FSU once he gets on campus. And also just hearing the kids speak, man, dynamic leader. I think he's going to be one of those locker room guys as well. So you pair Cam and Makai Dansley up. I feel like you got your Trey Benson and your Lawrence Hood Philly kind of combination, to be honest with you. So we'll see how that plays out moving forward. Moving on to the defensive line, we have Jamori Flagg, um, 6'3", 300-pound kid out of Miami, Booker T. Washington. Um, we did a pretty good job in South Florida. We do a pretty good job in South Florida typically, but with Jamori, I think he – He's going to be a developmental guy, needs some time to get in. Physical, I feel like he's raw, but needs to be coached up. We'll see how that plays out with Jamar. Moving on, got a legacy kid, Camden Fryer, six foot, 185 pound guy. This, like I said, it's a familiar name to the fan base. I really like Camden. You guys have been asking for um, your white slot receiver, and we got our, our um, white slot receiver in Camden. Um, real athletic. And don't even, don't get it twisted. I mean, when I say real athletic, the kid can run. He's, 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 a, he's a bona fide track guy. I think he runs a 4-4 in the 40, 6 foot. Um, he could be a really dynamic slot guy for us. I like Camden Fryer a lot. Uh, legacy kid. Alabama was, was trying to, uh, of course, they recruited him early on and was trying to get him to take visits, but he stayed pretty solid in his recruitment as well. I mean, you guys know the Fryer family, man. It's pretty much, you know, royalty and FSU from his dad to his uncle. It was only – we knew we had to. Um, we knew we had to get to, to get him on deck in regards to what uh, Cameron Fryer. Moving on, we got um, Tamir Hickman Collins. I like this kid. I know you guys get Randy Shannon some flake and you know from recruiting and things like that. Uh, Randy specials and, and those type of deal. But I like Hickman a lot. Six foot, two hundred twenty pounds from the South Carolina area. This guy is a. This guy is physical, 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 real physical. He um he's, he's the type of linebacker that gets knocked back. You don't see any. Pretty much yards after yards after carry once he yards after contact once he makes initial contact. I really like this like his film a lot. I really like his film a lot. We talk about Randy specials and stuff like that. I think that's a good gift for Randy Shannon. Moving on to our one of our other defensive line prospects. Well, I like defensive line prospects that we had committed. D.D. Holmes, 6'6", 250 pounds out of the Washington D.C. area. I like this kid a lot. Um, real nice defensive end, physical, big frame. 
Um, really big guy. I think he could be an enforcer on the edge. He could set the edge as well. And also, he's pretty solid in the pass rush, uh, run stopping ability, and things like that. I like the kid a lot. I really do. Really like the kid. We'll see how it plays out with a DD. Real good get by the staff. Like I said, the, the defensive line, rec- the guys we got aren't bad. I mean, we just need, we just got to get more talent on the defensive line. We can't just, you know, sign three guys and, and some of those guys be fringe guys and, and not be ready to contribute, you know, two to three years down the line. Moving on, we got Jamari Howard. Like I said, defensive backs. I, I really like this kid. I've been kind of consistent with this kid. All year in regards to being one of the guys I like the most within this recruiting class. Six, 285 pounds out of uh, Miami, Florida, played for New Orleans High School. Um, Jamari Howard. It was pretty much he was committed to Michigan State for a while, but down the stretch it was like a it was a big three battle, but more so Florida and Florida State. I think FSU did a better job in recruiting him down the stretch. Um, he left did not take some visits to Florida and then ended up committed to Florida State a couple weeks ago. Jamari Howard, six, 285 pounds, track guy. Runs a sub fifty in the uh, in the four hundred meters. I think he could be a really good player for us once he gets coached up by Pat Sertan. Uh, dynamic playmaker, long arms, um, big body, big corner, and that's another thing too. If you look at the cornerbacks we we recruited under Pat Sertan, well, defensive backs period, big body guys. All right, moving on. We got the receiver, BJ. I'm really excited about this kid, BJ Gibson. Six six hundred, um, excuse me, six foot, hundred ninety pounds from Georgia. Um, dynamic athlete. He he, um, two time had uh back to back a thousand yard receiving, a uh, thousand yards receiving. I really like this kid a lot. Playmaker plays baseball as well. This is a really good athlete. I think he could be a, a bona fide playmaker in the slot for us. <laughs> when you have just you look at the huddle right now. The, the plays BJ makes, man. I I was really high on BJ Gibson, really high. Florida Gators, Tennessee, a couple of SEC schools tried to push for a BJ before he announced for the FSU Seminoles. I like that kid a lot. You get the ball in his hands, um, good things happen. End of rounds, receivers, whatever it may be, um, I like him a lot. Play my theme music. Florida State, your brothers, your team, your heartbeat. We some dogs, we ain't no puppies. Shout out to Roll No um, for the donation. Appreciate it. Miami Hurricanes, all season champs, champions. <laughs> uh yeah, Miami doing their thing, man. All season. I can't even lie, man. I can't even hate. Uh Mario doing a hell of a job recruiting. Hell of a job recruiting. All right, let's move on to the offensive line. Uh Ty Hilton. I like this kid a lot too. 6'5, 280 pounds from the Oviedo, Orlando area. Uh physical kid, athletic. If you look at his build, he looks like an offensive lineman. Real nice frame. Uh with well built, solid, no bad weight around his body. I like this kid a lot. Um uh, dynamic player move on a little bit to the offensive line manasse et this is a kid that's going to be interesting 6'5, 290 pound from the california area he this was an interesting recruitment so he fsu was kind of favored after he visited in the spring took an official visit to usc over the summer committed to the usc trojans right then and there fsu and alex atkins stayed consistent within his recruitment and after they did that or whatever, the kid ended up flipping his commitment from the USC Trojans back to FSU, took his official visit this past weekend. New to the game of football, only been playing two years. Coach, um, His football coach found him on the basketball court. He was a basketball player, dancing bear, so to speak. So, you know, you got big guys that play basketball. They have um, potential for it to be an elite offensive tackle because you have nice feet. This is a guy to kind of watch out for. A big guy, like I say, he's a dancing bear, though, played basketball. Uh, Ricky Knight the third. Speaking about defensive backs, this is one of the forgotten guys. He committed to FSU over the summer and has been very, very solid within his uh, commitment. Six foot, 175, 175 pounds from West Palm Beach area. Uh, committed to FSU, I think over the Miami Hurricanes, they were recruiting him also. I like Ricky Knight as well, man. Real, real, real dynamic playmaker. Uh, plays good football. If you watched the game um, early in the year they had against Jeremiah Smith, he held his own against Jeremiah Smith. Made a couple players against um, Sean Knott. But a scrappy kid, physical as well, doesn't mind sticking his head in to make tackles. I like Ricky Knight. All right, man, we got a QB1 on deck, Luke Cromenhall, 6'4", 20 pound out of Savannah, Georgia. Shout out my guy Larry on, man, for the, for the, uh, for the Savannah love. But, yeah, I like I like Luke a lot. Uh, I've been calling Luke quarterback one for the longest. Um, I think Luke is big-time playmaker. You guys remember way back when – um, he was kind of underrated due to the fact that he wasn't a starter quarterback until his junior year because the uh, quarterback prior was a blue-chip kid in his own right, ended up committed to Auburn. 
Um, spoke to Denny Thompson a long while ago, and he pretty much said that, yeah, Luke is a, a dynamic big-time playmaker. Um, and we saw that last year as he got all the buzz, you know, and rolls up the rankings. I think from a potential standpoint, Luke has NFL quarterback potential, first-round draft pick potential, uh, nice frame, 6'4". He has the body type to carry 220 easily, elite arm, a rocket four arm. Uh, once he gets coached off by Norvell and, and Tozars and things like that, I think the sky has the limit for Luke Cromahawk. I'm very high on Luke. I think he can be <laughs> one of those guys, one of those guys. Another kid, like I said, he's still new to playing quarterback. Uh, he, he played safety initially for his high school, right? Physical kid, athlete, played safety initially, didn't start didn't start actually be a, um, becoming a starter until his junior year. The sky's the limit for Luke. I'm very high on Luke. All right. Defensive back Charles Lester the third. I see uh, Lester kind of showed you guys a little bit this AM. I uh, told him he's going to probably push his commitment for signing back to Friday or later day to day, and you know later on end up sending his uh, national letter of intent to FSU. I like him a lot, man. One of the best, with well, the best cornerback in the state of Florida. Plays both ways. Six foot guy. Uh, been the FSU lean for a little while. End up beating Alabama, Georgia, and Colorado for services. Dynamic athlete. Type of recruitment we type of recruit we need to win. In-state guy, um, I think Charles Lester could be a big-time playmaker at FSU. So, again, I love the defensive back class. Love it. Love the defensive back class. And Charles Lester is, is you know, one of those guys that could be one of the, that could be one of the cornerstones to compete day one for our playing time. As you guys know, we're losing Jerry and Jones. We're losing uh, Renato Green and, and, and things of that nature. I feel like that uh, Charles Lester can come in and compete. Luane McCoy, four-star receiver. 6'1", 180 pounds out of Miami, Florida, Miami Central. Um, another guy that, you know, we did a good job in going going down to Miami. And you look at the receiver class that we brought in. Um, I, I'll finish it up in a second. But look at the receiver class you brought in. We did a pretty good job. You know, Luane was a guy that ended up committing to FSU in the spring. Uh, surprised a lot of Miami Hurricane fans. And, and uh, throughout that recruitment, people thought he ended up flipping back to the Miami Hurricanes. Took multiple visits over the summer. Didn't take really any visits to FSU over the summer. Hell, I even thought he was flipping back to the Miami, he was flipping to the Miami Hurricanes at one point. But what kind of turned the tide for that recruitment, um, a conversation at the end of the summer, and also him taking a visit for the LSU game in Orlando. I think that kind of got FSU back in motion with LeWayne and then the short of his commitment. From, but from a playmaker uh, standpoint, dynamic guy can play receiver, can play cornerback, uh, does everything. I really like this kid. Like nice, nice, excuse me, nice route running, catches the ball very clean. Had the game against Shamanar early in the year, and to be real with you, he was the best player on the field that game um, against Jeremiah Smith and JoJo Trey and all those guys. Uh, Luane McCoy pretty much made the most plays during that game. I really like Luane McCoy. I think he could be a big time playmaker for FSU. Next receiver, this is the last one in regards to receiver Elijah Moore, six uh, four, two hundred a pounder out of Maryland. I, I like this kid a lot. We end up being Ohio State for Elijah Moore. Uh, Brian Hartline really wanted this kid within this class. Um, raw athlete, really raw athlete. Uh, make all type of plays. He's physical as well. Physical in blocking, physical in running his routes, and physical in attacking the ball. He's the type of outside receiver FSU needed within this recruiting class. Um, I like this kid a lot. Really good. I think he's still underrated, to be quite honest with you. I think he's a top 50 type of player in the country. I think Elijah Moore is going to make a lot of plays for FSU. Jaden Parrish. Uh, Linebacker from the Miami, Florida area. Uh, Atlantic High School. No, sorry, Palm Beach. Atlantic High School, Jaden Parrish. Uh, another linebacker that we got from Randy Shannon. Physical kid, good kid. Landon Thomas, this is one of the most exciting kids within the class. I'm about done. Bear with me. Landon Thomas, uh, tight end, four-star tight end out of the Cold Creek, Georgia area. Was committed to the Georgia Bulldogs. Ended up flipping him over the spring. Uh, big time athlete can make all type of catches. He's one of those guys who can line up in the slot of receiver, and you know he can just be a, a big body receiver as well. He can make a lot of plays for us. If you add Landon Thomas to that receiving room, to the receivers you brought in, and you pair that with Luke Cromahawk, Cam Davis, and Makai Dance, like from a skill standpoint, this is amazing fucking class for FSU. His playmakers left and right, from the running back to the receiver room. I'm really, and you have a quarterback that can get the ball to him. So I'm really excited for the skill position in the explosion moving forward for FSU. Um, Mike says the offense built for playmakers. He did a damn good job of bringing in playmakers within his class. Uh, Jaden Todd, 6'6", 350-pound lineman out of Dublin, Georgia. This kid is very – he's not recruited highly at all, but you look at his film, he's a damn mauler. Um, physical kid, well put, no bad weight. 
we can see the uh, tools to it, and we can see that Atkins wants to uh, mold some clay. Uh, Jake, uh, Jake is a wing bird, the number one kicker in the country. Uh, big time get. We needed a kicker for this class. He's the number one kicker in the country. So overall, I feel like the uh, FSU recruiting class is pretty good. Need to do better within the trenches, defense line specifically. We got to get better there. But overall, I think um, we did a pretty good job. From a skill standpoint, we really raised the room. It's going to be interesting to see these playmakers in Mike Norvell's offense. And also from a defensive back standpoint, oh, Sertan did a hell of a job. He would have got KJ would have capped it off, would have been, you know, I think we did a good job overall. Let's go ahead and bring my boy, my boy Larry on in, man. We got um, my brother Larry on being going to join the show. Um, co host of 26 Degrees, Miami Hurricane fan. What's good, my brother? How you doing? Can't hear you, bro. I think you're muted. Can you hear me, Larry? Uh, my bad, my bad. I had it muted, man. I've been okay. sitting back here vibing for a minute. It was good, bro. Good to see you, man. Good to see you too, dog. I like that shirt, man. Man, I like it too. I'm not even gonna hold you. I was <laughs> like, yo, it's comfortable. I like the, you know, the the vanilla color to it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wearing it out to dinner tonight, man. Okay, I like yeah, it, my brother. Yeah, yeah. support. Man I mean, of his word. Man of his I word. Appreciate what, man. I appreciate you for being a man of your word and come back on the show wearing a shirt too. But if you guys don't remember. Uh, for the we had Larry on on for the FSU and Miami game, we made a bet. You know, whoever win that game, we wear the opposite shirt. And uh, you know, of course, Miami. I'm sorry, FSU not win that game. And you know, here we are. Uh, I appreciate you, my brother, for doing that. Oh yeah, and I appreciate the fan that reminded me because I honestly forgot. I really did. I did like, too. Still, I did like, too. You still got a bet to pay. I was like, oh snap. So yeah, um, appreciate homie for reminding me. This is a comfortable shirt. I will be wearing it. Um, we don't have a dress code at my job. So I'll definitely be wearing it to work, if nothing else. Um, and I want to, you know, uh, in, in solidarity with my brothers up north, uh, I know what happened this year. Um, so, you know, 2013, man. They can't take yeah, that one, right? What's your opinion right? on that, bro? What's your opinion? <laughs> what's your opinion? My opinion? Oh, I'll be honest with you, man. I'll keep it one thought, and I know some people going to think it's trolling. I totally understood the decision. Based on how they set up their parameters from the get-go, Everybody goes to subjective. I'm like, bro, it was always subjective. The BCF yeah. was subjective. It, and they just looked at it and said, I just don't think this team is the same without, without uh, Jordan Travis. And I agree. Um, so to get snubbed, it sucks, but at least I understood it. Because um, I thought Georgia had just as big a beef. They lost by three points in the SEC title game. See, that's what I'm saying. If you're saying we're not the same team, that's why it's inconsistent. If you're saying we're not the same team because of Jordan Travis, Mm -hmm. why, why in the hell do you have us right ahead of Georgia, who has clearly been, you know, the best team in the country throughout, you know. Right. That was a consolation. Yeah. It was right. a consolation so, prize. You can't lose to the number eight team by three points and uh, in, in the SEC title game and then be like, oh, well, Florida State's still better than them. They don't – I don't think they believe that. Um, but both of you teams – Right. And they, I'm glad you said it, but that goes to my other point. They don't necessarily believe that. But okay, we're still going to do it because of the fact they were undefeated. So if that's the case, then you ain't got to believe we'll win the national championship because it's also just to give us a chance to be in that. We should, we should have been in that top four for that very simple fact of you know, hey, we don't really believe it, but you know they they're undefeated. Show us, give give you the opportunity. So that's why right. I feel like the inconsistency. And you want and you want a P five. You want a P five, right. um, undefeated. It's a hard argument to go against. They just drew it up in their own guidelines where they could be like, well, this is how we want to say it. So it, it wasn't new. They did say key injuries would count. Um, do I think Florida State would have fared well without without Jordan Travis? Nah, I really don't. Um, and unfortunately, this game ain't going to – I don't think this game is going to show us either, though, because – No, not this game. This shit don't matter. Y'all missing a lot of guys. I think Georgia – I don't think Georgia's going to be missing quite as many, but um, – even still, like you, you kind of lining up two teams where the big knock on Georgia this year, they was kind of waiting on Georgia to lose, was the lack of offense. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's like, well, damn, now you got two teams with great defenses, uh, with you know, offenses that haven't been, you know, up to to snuff to some people's ideas. And um, they just weren't gonna let Georgia get that three peat. So I guess they just knocked them out of there too. I think both schools had a legit argument to be like, damn. Like you almost would like to say, hey, just just make it six. Y'all make your own rules, anyways. Right. Who, who's gonna who, who what's gonna be the problem if you add two more teams? Yeah, who's who who, who gets to say anything about it? The one and the two seeds can get a, a can get a, a buy. Then those other teams can play each other. We add one more week. That's more money, anyways. And then mm -hmm. it's just one less question to be asked. So and I definitely understand. Well too. To be honest. 
What's that? I said everybody would have been happy as well. Two more money. Oh, yeah, money. yeah. You you get everybody happy. More money. Every team got to say, hey, we got a chance at it. Um, and this year, I honestly thought was probably one of the most wide open years I've seen, which is why I was so disappointed at us. I was like, man, we really dropped the ball on a year that we could have really shined. I don't think we was gonna win it all at all. Don't get me wrong, nothing like that. But with you know, Clemson still clawing back. Uh, we gave you guys a hell of a game. Even Louisville, if we win a couple of these games, maybe we win the don't, ACC. Don't, lose, don't, don't go that way. Don't lose to Georgia Tech. You definitely could have been. It's a whole nother season. So, you know, yeah, yeah, what it is. You know, uh, real quick, though, bro. Um, there's been a lot of head-to-head battles between FSU, Amario, and, 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 and Martin Novello. First of all, how do you feel about the Miami Hurricanes recruited class and just the head-to-head battles that we've been having, you know, going back from last year to Hakeem Williams, Edwin Joseph, Conrad, Conrad Hussey, yeah, even Jeremiah this year, even though there's other people involved. Um, Dwayne McCoy, JoJo Trader, list goes on and on and on. Um, Blunt, uh, and of course, the, you had to be um, uh, Hurricane Bang last year, too, as well. The uh, birthday cake shit. Yeah. Uh, I'll be honest, man. Mario did his thing. You know, he's kind of continued to do his thing in these good head to heads. Um, I, you know, remember, I remember we talked about Lewayne a lot on the show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, on the, and I was like, oh, he's going to flip. I, I really, and I was getting a lot of intel that he was going to flip. He's going to flip. Um, you know, I will say this about Lewayne. He definitely was coveted in this class. He, y'all did get a good guy. I think they went ahead and pivoted once he went and just kind of nailed it down, especially with all of the, you know, the visits and everything. It was like, okay, he's a, he's a guy we really do want, but – He's not going to make that move, so we're going to have move around. Um, other than that, though, like, uh, man, I think, you know, Mario's just been winning those those straight-up head-to-head battles. Whatever he's selling, they buying. Um, and, it's, and, and, you know, that's what we brought him here for. A lot of people thought it was going to be quick fix. Uh, that's what you would like to see, obviously, as a fan. But I think what you're really getting to see is a plan um, that, that can eventually come together, kind of like when uh, – when Al Golden came with the pillars, something of that <laughs> nature. <laughs> he got, he got, Mario got his own pillars he's stacking, and I think it's, it's, it's going to end up working out well for us in the end, winning these types of battles um, with the JoJo Traders, the, uh, you know, the Armando Blunts, huge flip there. Uh, just, I mean, I ain't going to hold you, bro. I'm, I'm ecstatic about this class. I think this is, this is an amazing class that we was able to put together, and it may not quite be done yet. Yeah, I think it's a pretty good class as well, um, especially how you guys closed down the end uh, to grab Blunt, Scott, and a couple others. Um, we, we made those jokes earlier about the money drying up, but clearly you, you, you said it then. <laughs> you know, that money an issue, and you guys not definitely came through. But yeah, money it's not an issue. No, nah, it's uh, not. Y'all been doing your thing. This is what everybody really got to understand with the whole NIL landscape as it's continuing to, um, continuing to develop is basically these schools all have a budget. And it's just like your NFL team. They got to work the budget and they got to decide who's worth what. And if they blow it maybe a little early on somebody that they think is a key, you know, get, it'll put you out of business. Like CJ was saying down the stretch against maybe a Jeremiah Smith, where maybe he mm-hmm. is honestly entertaining you. Um, but it's like, okay, well, what number can you give me? And you might have done the use the budget of yeah, that's what I'm saying. If you go go out to those certain type of players, you got to leave that budget open a little bit, just for because you go know a Miami, Ohio State, or whoever. When it comes, they they go they willing. So, and someone someone made this point in the timeline. I thought it was a pretty good damn point. Um, there's no such thing as overpaying if it's something you want. So if you, right. I've been you saying know, that from the get go. Yeah, if you identify one of those guys, you got to be willing to go the distance with one of those guys. Um, or like you said, because you're getting burnt down the stretch, waiting for one of these guys. So right. hell, you got to be all in at that point, right? Yeah, and, and that's what kind of sucks about the Bolden situation for y'all. To my understanding, that you probably got more. I'm, well, I know you got more intel than I do on that. I, I was to understand that a big part of him coming through was the business was tight. It um, was tight, and yeah, for him to flip last second like that uh, with a team that I mean, bottom line is y'all going to be ready to compete. Uh, in the next couple of years, I don't think there's going to be an ultimate fall off. Even if let's call next year a little bit of a setback, let's say let's say you fall over. I don't think you're going to talk fall to a six and sixteen. I think maybe a fall back, maybe a nine and three season where you're a little young and you got to retool a few positions here and there. Um, so for him to make that switch at the in the in the you know eleventh hour, I was like, 
wow, I heard the buzz a little bit, you know, in the last couple of days, but um, yeah, that that was a that was a bit of a shock to me because the business was together. But you gotta always remember, man, we dealing with kids. These kids, right. are, you know, something looks shinier cool. this way and something look a little better this way. That's how I go, man. You deal with parents too, especially in this new landscape. Yes. These parents moving a lot different within this new landscape. A lot different. What? A lot different. <laughs> Straight agents with no licenses. Facts. Facts, bro. They don't yeah. have no professional training, but they swear they know what they're doing. And I'm gonna tell you right now, they're gonna find out, and you're gonna see it because they're gonna tweet about it, uh, about how a lot of them got finessed because mm-hmm. they didn't understand uh the black and white or some stuff. Oh, they said this and they said that. Yeah, what that paperwork said. Right, exactly. paperwork didn't guarantee X, Y, Z. So you know you'll see some of that stuff eventually pop up as, as we continue to watch this uh, evolve into what is going to ultimately be total free agency. I agree, a hundred percent. That's why we say this way back when when they opened up the NIL stuff and they didn't put like parameters on, and you left so much for interpretation. That's that's when you know it's wild, wild west, and you can do whatever you want to, really. That's facts, man. I. You know, the traditionalists in me, uh, you know, I think me and Harlan spoke on this before, too. Like, I never want to hear nobody getting no money, man. But it's just, it's like, well, it's college football now. Um, yeah, great. Miami got number three class in the nation as of today. Awesome, man. You know, we got all these guys signed. Now, next year, you got to re-recruit them. Right. And you recruit your next man. class. Right. And, and work the budget. Just and, point, man. Um, this, man, this class um, it look good, but at the same damn time, you got to keep these same same cats in the port of next year. <laughs> got to keep them, man. And and never in the game. How difficult is that? You know, he got to learn from, from Saban um, being over there. You have to just continue to stack the bodies with talent because, A, you're going to get your transfers, and, B, um, some guys aren't going to pan out. So you, mm-hmm. you have to just keep going and going and going. Like, that's why our defensive line class got as large as it did, even though it was talented. It was still like, well, yeah, but if you get this talented kid, get them too. Some, so the, you know, the the the, um, the cream is going to rise to the top regardless. And, and some guy. But honestly, um, I was going to say you, you continue to do a, a college coach's job. A college coach should definitely get paid more than an NFL coach at this point. It's not even close to me. Yeah, He's doing close. way too much work. Way it's not the same job. deal. Not it's the same deal. It's a 24-hour job, 24-hour day job, to be honest with you, and that shit is year-round. It really is. It's and now you're a GM as well. Like It's yeah. just it's too too much for those guys, I think, to justify anybody at the, at the, uh, at the pro level getting more money than these guys. I agree, hundred percent. I got to wrap it up real quick, bro. I appreciate you coming oh, on. Yeah, I got to open up these callers. We definitely gonna get you back on soon, bro. Appreciate you. Yeah, man. Hey, twenty thirteen, baby. Never forget. <laughs> they can't take that one. They can't oh, they take can't that take one. That one. <laughs> All right, y'all be easy, man. All right, bro. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right, that's my guy, Larry on man. I'm co-host of uh, Twenty Six Degrees. Uh, Kane Sports. You got anything Kane related, man? I know this is FSU one, but if you want anything Kane related, definitely check them out. Uh, good guy. Uh, we're going to open up to the callers, man, see what you guys come in on, hear what you guys got to say on the last portion of the show, just to you know wrap it up and get your opinion on this signing day edition. If you guys want to join the show, go ahead and jump into the uh, – we got the uh, link into the chat. Go ahead and jump in. Let's talk it out for a second. And again, make sure you guys like this video um, and subscribe to the channel. We've got a healthy number of people in here. Go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I want to hear from the fans, man. Talk to me. How y'all, how are you guys feeling? I know there's a lot of, uh, um, you know – ups and downs, so to speak, a lot of sad faces in regards to us losing KJ and not finishing the close on some of these elite type of guys. But overall, I think we had a pretty solid class. So if you do got, if you guys do want to join the show, go ahead and hit that link. And we move on to the 2025 class. I do I do think FSU is still in a good spot, you know, with 2025 recruits. They did a lot of groundwork for relationships and things like that, uh, for sure. So I don't think – I don't know. I think we're getting progressively better. We're a top 10 class now, of course. Uh, first time we've been in a while. A lot, boy, you there? All right. 
One second, about to get you in. You did right. Uh, you, you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, we, I hear you now. Talk to me. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, man, I just want to spend it by no man. We good. Yeah, we lost KJ. But, man, you know, we just went 13 and 0, man. We lost one commit. And if you think about it, we just swapped out with Georgia. We, we, we took Landon Thomas at the time. He was a five star, number one tight end in the country. We took him from Georgia. Georgia lost their number one. Uh, they lost their quarterback. Everybody can get that. But yeah, we do yep. need the clothes better. We need to get the trenches right. But man, Odell is all world to me, man. Like, the recruit we need to get him much, much better. But what he did with Farmer, Farmer came in that thing like 250 pounds. Look at him now. Like, he's been getting to go to the NFL. Like, Odell development is all world, but he needs to do better. And we need to get some recruits in there for him, man. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. Uh, I mean, I, from what? You know what I'm saying? But I ain't, I ain't too upset. I just know I ain't too upset. Yeah, I was going to say from a development standpoint, man, like from a production standpoint, like you can't – it's hard to argue against Odell because the writing's on the wall, but we do got to get better recruiting-wise. But just from a coaching standpoint, it's definitely there. But at the same time, you got to have talent to coach, right? So it goes both ways. Facts, man, facts. But I just know that I know, man, Mike got us. We good. The position that we lost KJ in the secondary still was great. Oh. We didn't get Jeremiah, out, but the receiver still was great. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, I ain't the places we lost that, then blunt, we know he wasn't going to be in the class. So we just got to man, O line and D line. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. Oh, we yeah, got line, to make it. You hear me? You kind of you going in and out a little bit, bro. Right, bro. But man, we okay. good now. But yeah, man, I just want to know, let everybody know the sky ain't falling, man. Everything good. The sky ain't falling, man. Thirteen and know This is this recruiting part over with. Let's get ready for this spring. Yes, sir. That's the only thing you can do. Move forward and get ready. Like I said, the sky definitely ain't falling. We've seen a lot worse days for sure. We'll be good. All right, bro. Appreciate you. Yeah. Um, yeah, like like he was saying, man, from a defensive line perspective and an offensive line, I'm sorry, deep receiver's perspective and defensive back perspective, we have great receiver, a great receiver class, a great defensive back class. It could have been, of course, a lot better. Um, cherry on top for people, KJ and Jeremiah. But very good players are coming to Tallahassee for the receiver room and the defensive back room. Anybody else want to join the show? Go ahead and hit that link. If not, we're going to go ahead and wrap this one up. I'll give you a few more, a few more, a few more uh, minutes to get in. If you guys want to join, I want to hear you guys' take for sure. I probably talked too much in the early portion of the show, um, talking about each prospect, but I um, just want to let you guys know overall, the class definitely um, it's a pretty good class for sure. We just missed out missed out on the, uh, the big fish down the stretch. We're going to go ahead and close this show out again. Make sure you guys like this video and subscribe to the channel. Uh, moving forward, we got some. So we're going to be. Some, it's going to be some interesting changes with Doe Talk in regards to the uh, content we're going to be receiving. We're going to be tapping in with a lot of uh, former players and things like that. Get some interviews with them just to hear their stories. You hear about their playing days, recruiting, whatever. They take some FSU. We're going to get that going. So again, make sure you guys like this video and subscribe to the channel. Go knows.